Hello guys, welcome to this new video. This is the November 23 paper 2, question 5. And this question is about atomic transitions and a quick little calculation for this as well. So here we're given a table with some of the energy levels of a hydrogen atom. And part A wants us to determine the difference between an atom in an excited state and in an ionized state. So first of all, let's consider these energy levels. So we can have an atom and the, ele the electrons in that atom can be at different levels, which can be represented by these energy levels. So usually the lowest one is the ground state. So in this question, that's n equals one. This is the ground level. And then we go up. So for example, n equals two, this would be the second level, then n equals three, and n equals four, and so on. And if we have an atom in an excited state, that means that at least one of its electrons is above the ground state. So for example, here or here, pretty much any level above the ground state. So we could say an excited state just means that at least one electron is above the ground state. Like this. And then we also need to write down what the ionized state means. So if we look at a table, we see that the table says that when it's in an ionized state, n equals infinity and the energy equals zero. So what n equals infinity technically means is that we have this imaginary line like above which the atom, the nucleus, has no, no more reach on the electron anymore. So that means that it's unbound from the nucleus. It's no longer under the electrostatic force of the protons in the nucleus. It's completely detached from the nucleus. So if an atom is ionized, that means we, the atom has simply lost an electron. That would be a simpler way to say it. So we can say at least, because at least one means that we can obviously have more electrons removed from a atom as well. It doesn't have to be one only. At least, so at least one electron is unbound from the nucleus. So that is, that is what it means to be ionized. And then part B, explain how electromagnetic radiation is emitted from a hydrogen atom in an excited state. So if we, so pretty much an electron, as we can see on this diagram I drew here, can be at some excited state. And if it drops some levels, then it must um, emit energy. So if it's at some higher energy level, for example, at n equals four, and then it drops to n equals three, then it has lost some energy. And since this, this loss in energy will simply be carried away by a photon. And this photon emission is, is how electromagnetic radiation is being emitted. So we could say that a hydrogen atom has an electron in an excited state. And when this drops to a lower energy level, and this happens spontaneously, so we don't need to input any energy, the electrons usually want to be at the ground level, so they always want to drop back down as quickly as possible. So it, when it drops an energy level, it loses energy. And this energy, the way it loses it, is that it's carried away by a photon. By a photon. 
And well, this is the way that this radiation is being emitted. So if we would draw a quick little diagram here, and there's the ground state, so n equals one, and then this is n equals two, and this is n equals three. And let's say we have an electron dropping from n equals three to n equals two. Then during this, there would be a photon emission. This is usually how it's represented. So it emits a photon. That's how it loses its energy. And then the next part, part C, we have some radiation of wavelength that is incident on a cold hydrogen gas. And some of this is absorbed by the gas. So firstly, we simply need to state the region at which this wavelength is in. Well, this is something you just need to uh, remember that this is the visible region, visible spectrum. So usually anything in between, well, this is 660 times 10 to the minus nine meters. So usually we want to convert it to nanometers as these wavelengths are usually in nanometers. And visible spectrum is usually referred to as between 380 and 700 nanometers. So any wavelength given between these two would be visible. And then in the last part of this question, we are asked to determine the initial and final states of the hydrogen atom that are involved in this absorption. So what is going on here is that if this is the ground level and this would be the second level, then this would be the third level. And it goes three. And so, for example, if we have an electron over here, an electron, and it gets up to a higher energy level as it is absorbing a uh, photon in this case. So this is the opposite of what we've been talking about previously. Before it was dropping energy levels and releasing photons. Here it's absorbing a photon and so increasing, its, so going up in the energy levels. And the question just wants us to find which, um, between which of these levels is this uh, transition happening. So first of all, we need to determine how much energy it gained from this um, absorbed from this photon that is being um, show, shined onto the hydrogen gas. So if we look in a data booklet, we can see that energy is the Planck's constant times the frequency of the photon. Now here we're not really given the frequency of the radiation, we're given the wavelength, but luckily we have this relationship between wavelength and frequency, which is that the speed of light is simply equal to the wavelength times its frequency. So if we rearrange this for the frequency, we find that this is C over lambda, and we can plug this back into here. So we end up with a usable formula in this case, H C over lambda. And this is Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by the wavelength, which in this case is 660 nanometers. So if we plug everything in, this is 10 to the minus 34 times 3 times 10 to the 8. And then obviously we want to convert nanometers to meters in the form this was already given in the question. And so we find that this is 3 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So we know the energy it has gained. The only question is, between what levels was it? Was it maybe from n equals 2 to n equals 4, was it from n equals 3 to n equals 4, or maybe even a higher energy level? We don't know yet. This is what we want to find out. But luckily, at the start, we were given some energy levels. So we were given the energy levels for n equals 1, 2, and 3. So it's definitely going to be somewhere between these three. So if I just write them here, this was minus 13.6 electron volts, minus 3.4 electron volts, a minus 1.51 electron volts. Now you see that here we calculate energy in joules, but all of these values are given in electron volts. So somehow we need to convert these. And 
we can you do this by through the definition of an electron volt as an electron volt is just the work done work done on an electron when it moves through a potential difference of one volt so what that means the work done on an electron when it moves through one potential so one volt so the formula for that would just be v times the charge as one electron moves so this shows us that well the one volt is just one so it's just one times the charge of an electron which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 and this is equal to well just 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 and in this case joules so we see that this here is one electron volt you can also see that the e refers to the q and the v here refers to the v that's where the name comes from so uh, yes so now we know that one electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules so now we just want to convert these joules we have calculated into electron volts well how do we do that we can just divide the two so we know that this will be the energy in electron volts over 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 which will just be approximately 1.88 electron volts and we need to see which of these levels have the difference of 1.8 electron volts and well it will obviously not be these not be these two as that's like around 10 it will also not be 1m3 as that's even a bigger difference so by method of elimination it must be these two over here so the electron must have when must have gone from n equals 2 to n equals 3 and we can also check that as we can just do the final state minus the initial state so minus 1.51 minus minus 3.4 which is 1.89 electron volts and we see that when it travels from n equals 2 to n equals 3 this is how much energy it uh, gains through this absorption so this is how you would uh, solve this part and well this was uh, question 5 then and uh, see you in the next one